Wiley! What? Did you get me that bale of straw yet? I didn't get a chance. Listen, that's what you said yesterday. Them poor calves are bedding down on damn straw, so they are. I'll get it when I'm ready. When do you get it yourself? And what was that, sir? Nothing. Look, I have to get the whole house ready for the party, so I have. Oh, yeah. Priorities. First things first, huh? I'm after vacuuming the whole place. Do you think I can waltz in and out of cow sheds now? Oh, Davy, where did you come from? I walked. And uh, does your mother know you're here? She's at work. Oh, but did she know you're here? No. <sighs> oh, of course, a god in it anyway. Oh, listen, come on with me. Where? Ah, come on, will you? I have to get straw for this fellow's calves. Might as well get me a bale of hay while you're out. No, we just can't do it, Mickey. We have to pay the ESB. We got a final notice for that. And we're two months behind on the car. Oh, look, should we not get rid of the car? I mean, we can't afford to go out in it. We can't even afford to tax it. But don't we pay that? It was last year. You're supposed to pay it every year. Well, look, if we got rid of it, that'd be one worry less. Yeah, and if we drowned ourselves, we'd have no worries at all. Ah, no, cut that out, Kevin. I'll be back at work soon. You'll get a fantastic job. We'll be on the pig's back. You know where you slipped up? You should have gone to Australia with Chuck. You'll be on the pig's back now, like Rhoda. Oh, thanks very much. Look, we've got a lot to be grateful for, so we have. God, and I think of poor Biddy. I would just stop thinking about poor Biddy. I can't help thinking about her. I mean, Miley, of all people. God, he's got a wife, he's got two beautiful kids, he's got a farm. What does he want to be running around with that one for? Well, you're not to say anything, do you hear me? Mm. Huh. Wife's always the last to know, isn't that right? Just you don't say anything. I won't. But she'll find out. And when she does, she'll kill him and he'll deserve it. Oh, I know he will, yeah. Miley! I'm here. Can you come here a second? I had to bring this down to Denny's car. I know, I need you now. Hi. Hello. Hey, come here, Miley. Yeah, I'll just bring this down and I'll be back, all right? No, listen, the washing machine is broken and the water's gone all over the floor. Will you come on? Oh, all right. You never give up, do you? Give up what? I know well what you're at. I'm going to say that you... Have you heard something, have you? Huh? Have you been listening to old stories from people that have nothing better to do, have you? Sure, I don't have to listen to anybody. I have the evidence in my own eyes. I can tell you one thing, I don't want a child, and that's once and for all, and you can't accept that, then we might as well just give up. I'm sure I do accept it, didn't I tell you that? But then why do you keep on bringing him here? What are you trying to prove? You think that if you can show me how much you want a son and what a great father you'd be, I'll change my mind. Well, I won't, and you might as well accept that now. What do you mean? Are you talking about young Davy, are you? Well, who else would I be talking about? Oh, well, no, look at it, never really. Listen, that's not why he's here. It wasn't meant that way at all at all. Well, then why do you keep on asking him that? I didn't ask him. He just come, comes over. He likes to be around the farm. The sooner he goes, the better. And what the hell harm is he doing here anyway? I told you the harm. I don't want him here. Oh, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll take the lad home, so. Can you not go home, sir? No, because it's raining. And it won't take me long anyway, will it? And it wasn't meant that way at all at all. How are you, Billy? Oh, God. That's a great welcome. Oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Chuck, I didn't mean it. It's great to see you. You too. Come on in. Thanks. I'm just in an awful mess, that's all. Hi. Yeah, Miley said you'd be calling. Look, would you excuse me a minute while I clean up this mess out here? Oh, sure, yeah. Listen, uh, could I make a call while I'm waiting? Yeah, sure, as long as it's not Australia. Actually, it's your mother's house. Well, I won't be long. It's busy. Uh, no, 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 Matt, you've got that wrong there. You see, no, nobody's taken anything over, not even you. I'm not giving up the business. I'm selling it. Oh, I do realize the problems I've had. Very kind of you to remind me. But you see, the one thing that I have managed to hang on to are a few loyal clients. 
A clientele have built up over the last 27 years. Well, there's no purchase price. The buyer takes over the debts. Uh, hang on. What's the list so far? Uh, about 16,000. 46,000, Matt. Well, I'm considering another offer at the moment, so if you're serious about this, you better get back to me in, well, the next 24 hours anyway. I know blood is thicker than water, Matt, but I've realized over the last while that money is thicker even than blood. Right. Well, I'll talk to you again, so right bye. Where did you get that from? What about the money and blood? Just made it up. No, no, the bit about the 46,000. Well, there's uh, the 16,000. And there's the 30,000 I borrowed from you. Oh, Dick, you can't. Why not? It's a legitimate debt, and the company is going to honour it. Now, I don't know what future we're going to have, Mary, but we're going to start it with a clean slate. I think you're dreaming. Why? Matt will never buy it. Don't be too sure. Sure, half his business is based on contacts I gave him. You're very ruthless with him. Isn't it about time for me? You see? Hello? Is, uh, is that Dick? Chuck, God, how are you? I, uh, I heard you were home. How's it going? I'm fine. Uh, I called round to the office to see you, but, uh... Oh, no, 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 I, I, I closed that up. I'm working from home now. But listen, um, uh, if you're out this way, why don't you drop in and say hello? Actually, um, I was going to take you out to lunch. Where? Well, I believe the country club's quite good. 1.30 in the bar? Right, that'll be fine. I'll, I'll see you then. Okay, good luck. Get through? Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> What's the matter? Nothing. You just turned out so well. Oh, I don't know. Well, I think I was lucky. And now it takes more than luck. Ah, no. I mean, to get away when I did. Before the recession. So what brought you back? Just a visit. And a bit of business. Well, not much of that. Sam Oily down the pub. He hasn't changed a bit. Sam Oily's the sort that never changes. Yeah. Right, Davy. And listen, if you're uh, if you're passing the shop, be, be sure to call in. Okay, I'll see you, Marley. Davy, where were you? This is Marley. And how often have I told you not to go off anywhere without telling me? One in out of the cold. How are you, Marley? How are you? Did you come in for a minute? Uh, no, I, I'd better not. Is there anything wrong? No, no. Well, actually, um, Myself and Biddy had a, a bit of a barney. Oh, not about me. Oh, no, no, no. Something else entirely. But uh, I'll tell you, I, I, I got a, a bit of a fright. I was sure she'd found out that somebody had told her. But they hadn't, had they? No. Not that there was much to tell. Well, no, but... Uh, but anyway, it shouldn't have happened. No. But uh, I blame myself entirely. Well, you shouldn't. There were two of us. I know, but still, still, uh, it was my fault, and there's no use saying it wasn't. So I was, I've been thinking that maybe, well, that maybe I, I shouldn't take you home from the takeaway anymore. Okay. But listen now, Carmel, if there's anything at all that I can do, like anything, just don't be afraid to ask. Yeah, I know, Miley. All right. Uh, I'll see you around, Carmel. Where's the car? It's not taxed. It's yours. Did you come up here to abuse me again, did you? Well, at least you're respectable at this time. Last time you were like boxcar, oh, Willie. Oh, thanks very much. Hey, do you know who's back? Chuck. I know. I'm going to meet him. Are you really? What about? Don't know. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Where are you meeting him? The country club. Oh, well, I hope he's paying. <laughs> so do I. Now, if you finish the interrogation, I have to go, all right? Listen, will you drop by and see Ricky on the way back? I might. You can tell me what Chuck said. If there's anything I think you should know, I'll tell you. Now, shift that heap of rust before I flatten it. Come on, I'll see ya! Good luck. Ah, oh, how are you, Biddy? Hi, hey, Teasy. I suppose we'll see you at the party this evening. Ah, uh, I don't feel much like parties, but I'll go for a while anyway. The home run short of booze anyway, I have the car full of it. Oh, here's Danny, I'll see you, Teasy. Okay, bye, love. Hi, Jenny. Oh, cheesy. Oh, so that's the drink. Yeah. She's a bit low, isn't she? Uh, or has everyone really been having a bit of a row? 
It won't be the first, God knows it won't be the last. Listen, uh, Dinny, I wanted to talk to you about something. Now, I, I hope you won't take me up wrong, but there's been uh, talk. About what? About Miley and Carmel. Miley and Carmel? I know Miley is a heart to go, and he'd go out of his way to help anyone in Carmel's position. But um, people are saying it's gone further. Who said that? Well, Rory was the first one. Couldn't they better not say it to me? There's bound to be talk, Dinny. Do you know that Miley drives her home practically every night in the takeaway? I don't believe it. Well, it's true. I've seen them myself. But, but sure, you're not a kind Miley. It's when the poor husband died, he took it all on his own shoulders. But it's the way they go about it. I mean, Miley drives up, she comes out, slips in beside him. It's, it's not open, you see. The only reason I'm telling you this is in case it gets to Biddy's ears, and it will, you know. I well, sure. What can I do about that? Maybe you could have a word with Miley to see it goes no further. Uh, not in his nature, Teasy. Sure, I know that, Timmy. Not in his nature. Chicken the chicken korma, made simple by Sharwood. That'll be cash. Uh, let me see what's involved there. Premises. Offices in yard, bulldozers, diggers, loaders, heavy trucks. All PMO. How do you know? I've looked. And there's a sand pit. Hardly being touched. You do know that the building trade is on its knees just now here. That's why we expect to get it cheap. What sort of money are we talking about? Well, I think there's somebody over there that knows you. Look, why don't we uh, talk about that over lunch, huh? Terry! Hello, Chuck. Uh, Terry Colleen. Chuck boy. How are you doing? Hello. I've uh, been out of the country for a few years. I'll go and uh, see what's keeping the table. Look, I want to talk to you. You heard I called? No. Oh. Well, I expect Mary forgot. Can we meet? When? After lunch. Terry, please don't be offended by this, but... Uh... I don't want to see him together just for the moment. All right. Where should we go? I usually take a bit of a walk after my lunch. What on earth went so wrong? I got greedy, didn't I? Things were slipping away from me and... I thought I could recoup everything with one stupid investment. Mark Tully. Yes. I haven't seen him, have you? No. But I will. I intend to make it my business. It isn't, you know. Isn't what? It isn't your business. I got into this mess myself. I seem to remember you asking my advice. Yes. And it was good advice. I was just out of my league. I'd like to help if I could. I don't have a lot at the moment, but if you're really in a hole... Why would you want to? Old times sake. I manage, I think. But I'm grateful for the thoughts. I am. Careful now, Rhoda. I wouldn't want you to damage yourself. Mm. There you are now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad you had this chance of having a little chat with you alone, Teasy. Because I think we've so much in common. I'd like to think that we could be friends in spite of all. What do you mean in spite of all? Well, as you know, in this life, there can't be winners without losers. I do hope you'll forgive me for taking him from you. Oh, I do, Rhoda. I forgive you. I don't want to say anything hurtful, because God knows you've been hurt enough. But I think it's only true to say that your marriage with Sylvester was a marriage in lime only. Where do you think Rory came from? Oh, I don't 
mean there wasn't a physical side to it. I mean, after all, Sylvester's a very attractive man. But our relationship is deeper, more spiritual. Is that what it is? Yes, I, I think so. <laughs> it's really trying to call him. Here, chance will be a group. The kiters will be here at six o'clock, Dinny. Uh, have to be patient, so. Isn't it great all the same? To see Sylvie's two wives working away together in perfect harmony. If you want your other hip broken, you'll carry on just as you're going. Hey, uh, how are you? She in? No, she's going to get Ricky for football. Do you want to wait? No, I better go home. Tell her I call him. Yeah, sure. Any sign of a job? No. Looks like I'll have to go to the continent. Michelle doesn't fancy it, but there isn't much choice. Oh. Listen, is it true you had a run in with Mark Tully? Who told you that? I can't remember now. It's true, all right. I believe he stitched you up, too. He wouldn't give me a reference. Why not? Because I hit him. <laughs> well, I didn't even have that pleasure. <laughs> But I'm not finished with him yet. I'll catch up with him. But when you do, give us a shout, will you? Right. See you. See you, Tilly. Well, where anything? Nobody's going to be looking at you. They're all going to be looking at Rhoda. Right, OK. I'll see you there, then. Oh. Who is that? Oh, Biddy. She's in rotten form. I think she should get out of the house more. Yeah. So tell me, how did it go? Ah, he wants to buy up this company. And he wants me to do the deal for him. And are you going to? I don't know. I see. So Chuck has money then? So it would seem. Remember the time he caught his young brother lifting salmon out of the river? They didn't have a bob between the lot of them. Neither could buy and sell me. Where else did you go? Uh, dropped in to see Ricky. Had a chat with Kevin. Bumped into Terry Killeen. Oh. Hmm. She was out at the country club. Where else? She said she dropped in here the other day. Oh, yes. Did I not tell you? No, you didn't. What else did she have to say? Not very much, but she meant well. Dick, it was through Terry that you met Mark Tully in the first place. And it was Terry that advised you to invest in him. I know that, Mary, Now, but listen, it's... I just happen to think that our lives would have been a lot happier without Mark Tully. And an awful lot happier without Terry Colleen. You'll, you'll sing a prayer for me, Father, won't you? Certainly. Don't forget Very that. kind, thank, thank you. Very thank much. you. Thank 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 Fine, thanks, Miley. We'll ask him. Huh. Ours are all stretched out in Ginny's bed next door. All right. Who's here? Oh, hey, Carmel. Oh, yes. No, I have the night off. Hi, yeah. Michelle. Hi, Miley. Oh, Carmel, how are you? You're, you're looking well. So, uh, who's looking after the pub, then? Carly Hall now. The great crowd in here, though. Uh, we don't see much of you lately, do you? Oh, oh, well, uh, Miley there seems to be able to get around all right. Uh, can I get you a drink, Carl? Uh, yeah, yeah, white wine would be lovely. Great job. Oh, big God! By the way, you look good here, yeah, Miley. How you doing? How you doing? Hey, Charles. Yeah, yeah, see. Hello there. Come over here and I get you a drink. Thanks, So, what do you think of Chuck? It's not bad, is he? Not in second thoughts, are you? No. I believe in those. That's great to see him doing so well, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like your man from Wuthering Heights. Oh, hi, Stephen. Oh, oh, how are they, girls? You didn't Grant, have Grant. <laughs> well, you were just saying, it's not great to see Chuck doing so well. Oh, it surely is. Surely is. One thing strikes me as, as odd, though. What? Didn't he say he was staying above with the mother and Bray? Yeah, what's odd about that? From what I remember of the family of Bray, they were sleeping four to a bed. Not anymore. He bought them a lovely four bedroom house. She did. Oh, oh good God. Yeah. Well, he must be really making money, really so. Ah, oh, 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 well, you look who's here. Oh, look, oh, oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, look. Oh, look. What do you want to oh, What? Oh, all right, you'll bring business. it to your own bed. Oh, and I'll read your story. I might be back later yeah. on. Bye, bye, sweetheart. There's a good girl. Yeah, well, now it seems to be warming up nicely in there. Yeah? Laurie, I want you to have this. Ah, oh, sure. Oh, no, no, no. Don't open it now. I just want you to know how much it meant to me, meeting Sylvester's son. Well, I want you to buy some little thing to remember me by. 
That's right, yeah. Yeah. Hey, what do you think you're doing? This is a nice little reward for virtue, isn't Come it? Come on, Kevin, stop messing. I'm not the one who's been messing. You still owe me 500 quid. Yeah, and you're going to get it. You're bloody sure I'm going to get it. I'll call into the bank first thing tomorrow. I have a better idea. We both call in. All right. Ten o'clock tomorrow. You can call for me. And I'll bring this with me. You're a dad for it, Mom. And don't you forget it. I see her here with the widow. Yeah, well, I only gave her a lift. So why shouldn't I, anyway? Oh, no reason. There's no harm in providing a bit of consolation. No, but I thought uh, Miley was doing that. Yeah, well, he might be trying. But he has no chance. Why not? But you can't carry on with a married man in a place like Glen Row. Can't allow that. See you in the morning. Do you know, this is the first time you've come here that it didn't cost me money. I haven't gone yet. <laughs> I'm only cotton, money cotton. As a matter of fact, I've been trying to give money away since the day I arrived, and nobody will take it. And do you know why? Because there are checks you signed years ago that are bouncy still. Uh, that, that was a different person, Jeez. Uh, I don't know about that. Still, you seem to have landed on your feet this time. Oh. I'm a fortunate man too, Cheesy. I don't mind admitting that for a long time my life was just wandering without purpose before finally coming into harbour. <laughs> Do you remember the old song? At 35, you find him flirting sadly with two or three or more. Commander. When he fancies he is past love, it is then he meets his last love. And he loves her as he's never loved before. I know, I know, don't leg reminds me of it. There's a sweet garden spot in my memory. Tis the place I was born in and reared. No, tis long years ago since we left her. But return there we will if we're spared. And, um, the friends of companions, companions of childhood, <laughs> like that, are them, would assemble <laughs> these night near a score around Dan Murphy's shop. And how often we sat on the stone <laughs> outside Dan Murphy's door. Not together, no, let's see. Those days in our hearts we were cherished, contented although we were poor. And the songs that were sung, and the bricks that were flung, on the stone outside Dan Murphy's door. And you can enjoy a repeat of Glen Row on Thursday evening next at 7.35 over on Network 2.